Hello everyone, we are here at the State of Art Academy, day number eight, and with me is Martha Kalbi. And please make a short introduction, and after that, if you can tell us a little bit about what you introduced um, at the hall uh, previously. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Marta Calbi, and I'm uh, from the Department of Medicine and Surgery at the University of Parma. And I'm a postdoc researcher there, and I'm working with uh, Vittorio Gallese, Professor Vittorio Gallese and Professor Maria Alessandro Milta. And uh, I'm here today because I gave a talk about experimental aesthetics and so how uh, the observer's brain react uh, during aesthetic experience. Uh, and in particular, I presented several studies from our group related to images and movie perception in aesthetic experience. Uh, that's, that's interesting. So let me ask you something like this. Um, on my blog, each week I'm picking the best of week image. So it's a process by which I'm uh, curating images being posted over a week and then I'm selecting the best one based on uh, criteria that's uh, prevailing throughout the architecture visualization world, but it's predominantly something that I'm doing. It's a subjective um, uh, judgment by myself, but based on you know common practices. So. Um, Listening to what you presented and what you say now, is there a way to um, get to the point that we can be more scientific about that process so it doesn't have to be me, but we can develop some kind of system by which you look at an image and you know if it's a good image or not a, not a good image? Um, at the moment, uh, I think we are at the stage where uh, we need uh, uh, neuroscientific devices to see what happens in perceivers' and observers' brain during perception of images and artworks. Uh, so, uh, for example, we developed several studies while um, participants view uh, digital artworks uh, or abstract uh, artworks, for example, by Lucio Fontana or Franz Klein, and we measure how the brain reacts in front of these artworks. Not only, we also measure how the brain reacts in front of uh, uh, film sequences, uh, movie perception, so how different kind of uh, filmic techniques and filmic styles affect the observer's brain. And in particular, we focused on the motor resonance mechanism because in our opinion, uh, the body has a crucial role in aesthetic experience uh, because during aesthetic experience, uh, it's not all involved uh, a visual processing of the image, but also a sensory motor one because we activate a kind of a simulation process, a simulation mechanism. Um, uh, which uh, enables us uh, to, to better understand the artwork uh, and uh, to aesthetically evaluate the artworks. And um, given this basis, uh, I think in the future uh, it would be possible maybe to, to develop a device uh, to yeah, to see if uh, an artwork has those characteristics uh, that uh, uh, the observer's brain need uh, to be um, involved. Uh, yeah. So if I take this a little bit further, uh, how, how big of a group do you have to um, uh, empirically study to come up with a uh, general conclusion? So what I'm asking is, is it enough to, to, to test on, on one person and then uh, make a general assumption, or do you have to test a large sample of, of So, like, some people are artistically inclined, so when they look at an image, they would say it's good, it's bad. Others, you know, it's, it, it looks the same for them. Uh, so, how would that work? How, ma how many people do you have to sample to get some kind of substantial result? Yeah. Um, so at first, for statistical reason, we need uh, a large sample of participants, let's say at least 30 participants for each experiment. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we have only to take into account uh, uh, other factors which are, uh, which are involved during aesthetic experience because, okay, mm, we say that the body is important, but there are also cultural factors, uh, um, the familiarity of participants with the artworks, their uh, experience 
experience uh, with, uh, with the artworks, their background, uh, and um, the way we uh, try to take them into account is, uh, for example, uh, um, asking participants to fill in several questionnaires to then divide our sample and make analysis uh, that take into account these uh, factors uh, as uh, possible variables that uh, intervene in, in, in the results, basically. Do you, do you collaborate with other universities around the world in, with this kind of specific study or is it uh, isolated to your uh, university? Um, it's, uh, it's basically developed uh, in our university. There are also other groups uh, in other universities and we have a collaboration uh, um, with the Katrin Hyman from Horus University um, in particular uh, regarding the um, uh, movie perception field of research because uh, she started in Parma and now she has she's uh, at Horus University. Yeah. Okay, so to, to, to sum it up, um, what what would be the best case scenario for you? Like uh, how how long, and what kind of result do you expect to get from this study? What kind of application do you hope you would be able to introduce to the world, and and when? Oh, when? <laughs> I don't know, exactly. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to think about the aesthetic experience uh, in, a, in a movie theater, in a theater or in a museum uh, as uh, not only uh, as a visual experience, uh, uh, but uh, um, we need to be um, more open uh, in a way that we take in into account all our senses in front uh, of an artwork. Uh, and yeah, it would be nice to collaborate with the mu museums and artists and video makers uh, and, and so on uh, to, to, to make it possible. I don't know. Okay, thank you very much, Marta. Uh, we'll see you at the, at the next interview. Bye-bye.